here is quite a standard problem and there's lots of information in the question. It's a design task. We want a circuit that's going to allow us to control an output from a logic gate. So we're going to use a transistor. We're going to be controlling an electric heater, which will be relevant at the end. It's 60 watts and it uses a 48 volt supply. The logic gate has an output of only 5 volts and can supply a maximum of 20 milliamps. So as usual, we've identified all the information in our question. So let's draw ourselves a circuit. So we've got a 48 volt supply. We've got an electric heater, which has this symbol. We're going to choose to use an NPN bipolar transistor. And as always, we attach the emitter to 0 volts. We attach the base through a resistor to our logic. And we draw a circle around it to make it look like a transistor. So we have seem to have done the task. We've designed a circuit, but there's still some numbers to put on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the information about the heater to work out how much current flows through the collector. So we know that power equals V times I. And therefore, I equals P over V. And therefore, in this case, I equals, right, we need to get our Windows calculator. Here it is. And we do 60 divided by 48 equals, and that comes out to be 1.25 amps. And this is the collector current, so we can draw it on here, IC is 1.25 amps. Now we've only got 20 milliamps of current from our logic gate, just there. So the next thing is we can work out the gain of a transistor that we're going to use. So HFE equals IC over IB, being careful to put them in the same units. So that's 1.25 amps and 20 milliamps is 0.02 amps. So the gain comes out to be, let's have a look divided by 0.02, so 63. So what does that actually mean? Well, this is the minimum, because that's the maximum current that the, the logic can provide is 20 milliamps. We need at least 63 as our gain of our transistor. So let's go and have a look at our transistor data, which we've been very kindly provided with. The case style doesn't make any um, influence on our choices, so we're not going to look at that column. This is an interesting column, the power. Now we're going to use our transistor in its transducer driver mode, so ideally it won't dissipate any power. So quite often people confuse this column with the power of the actual heat of the 60 watts, but that's not what it means. This column is irrelevant actually because the transistor is hopefully not going to dissipate any power, it will be fully turned on. So we can look at each of the transistors in turn and decide whether or not they're going to be useful. So the first thing is the collector current, this one here, has got to be at least 1.25 amps. So this one's no good, this one's no good, and this one's no good because they can't handle the current. This one also, and this one also, don't have a high enough collector emitter voltage because we're using a 48 volt supply. Now the next thing is we need a gain of 63 so this one's no good, this one's no good, this one's no good. So for so anything that's left, well yes, this one can take 2 amps of collector current, 90 volts supply, a gain of a, a minimum gain of 100. So this is the transistor that we're going to use, the 2SD590. So we've almost designed our circuit now. So now we need to work out what the base resistor is. So this point here is going to be 5 volts because it was told in the question that the output was 5 volts. This point here is going to be 0 0.7 volts when the transistor is fully turned on. So the voltage is going to be 4.3 volts across the resistor. And the current flowing into the base is going to be 1.25 amps divided by the actual gain we're using, which is 100, which is... 0.0125 amps. So that's the current flowing into the base. Okay, so now we can work out the value of the base resistor. So 
the resistance of the base resistor is the voltage divided by the current and the voltage in this case is 4.3 because it's the voltage drop across the resistor and the current is 0.0125 so we get our windows calculator back and we go 4.3 divided by 0.0125 and that comes out to be 344 and the units of course are ohms so therefore we'll use the next lowest value so we make sure we have plenty of current to saturate the transistor and make sure it's fully turned on so we use 330 ohms as our base resistor and that's the problem solved or is it? because remember at the start we actually highlighted the fact that the output was an electric heater and we seem to have done the whole design process we've worked out the transistor to use, we've worked out the base resistor but it does actually say design a circuit and the heater is a device which has a coil in it so the final part that we need to add to our circuit to make it a complete design is a diode in reverse bias and that diode protects the transistor so now we have designed our circuit we've added all the components necessary and worked out the values of the resistors.